let's take a look at how to make a component discoverable. So we're going to look here first at a example of a button that's not doing that. Now that we have variants and properties, it can be tempting to build out a sort of mega component that can do it all. For example, a really massive set of buttons that can be transformed into multiple different types of buttons, like regular icon and link, by configuring the different properties. And while it is a little satisfying to be able to make something like this work, it actually makes discovering your components a lot harder for designers. So using this button as an example, we'll grab the assets panel. When someone's looking at the assets panel and there is no link button, they have to just already know and also remember that in order to get a link button, they need to add in a component from the asset panel that has a generic name, like this one just button, and looks different, this one's filled in and then use the properties to create that link. I'm going to add this in. And I'm going to use my properties over here to change this from a regular button to a link button. And this is a pretty poor experience. Components should be much easier to find and not rely on the designer's memory. So instead, you should use, or sorry, you should separate components into smaller sets. So let's look at another example. And when deciding how to split these components up, I like to always ask the question, what should a designer see when looking in the assets panel? And then work backwards from there. Almost always separating components by their type or purpose is going to be really helpful. So let's start with this example, our button, and look in the assets panel. We have our good button. We see it's broken up by each individual type. So we already know just by looking what is currently available to us. But we even could, if we want to go a step further and separate these out by primary, secondary, danger, and so on, just to make it even more obvious all of the options available right away to any designer. Let's check out a few other examples. Let's start with our badge. So we see here a few different types of badges. We have our label, status, icon, and notification. And these are nearly identical. It would be really easy to combine them as one or two sets of components, but they do serve very different purposes. So it's better to keep them separate. Take a look at our badges here. Great. Just by looking in the ask panel, we already have a really clear understanding of what's available to us. Even if we're brand new to this file, we can add in any of these components. Let's take a look at one last example the input. So again, we have all these different types of inputs, a flexible input, single select, multi-select, date, password, etc. And again, they're all using almost the same structure. So it'd be really easy to combine them with our properties, but then we couldn't see them in the assets panel. Then we get this really nice experience where we can just preview all these little thumbnails of the different options available to us. And not only do we not have to remember what we have, but also when we drag in our component, we already have the component we want and we don't have this extra task. I'm going over here to the properties panel and configuring the component to what we want it to be. So separating components to make them more discoverable is going to make finding the right one a lot easier and faster for your designers. And it's also going to ensure that components aren't forgotten about by the team. And if you're on an enterprise team, you can also track your component usage a lot more accurately.